Hey everybody, and welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our new series, Tech Deep End. Compared to on a technicality, Tech Deep End is going to be looking at larger problems that may take more than one episode to fix, or they may be things that I don't exactly know what I'm doing, I am learning as I go. What we're taking a look at here is a Konami M2 board, and the person that owns this bought it, and it came in without the third subboard that holds the real time clock chip. That chip checks against the CD as well as the 7K ROM on the subboard we're looking at right here. And if that chip confirms the data matches, it will boot the game. If it doesn't match, you get a hardware failure, you get nothing. So what we're doing right now is just using a little flathead screwdriver to pop that ROM BIOS chip out. You can use a chip puller, but I find for most socketed chips, you're gonna be fine with a flathead screwdriver if you're very careful with it. All you do is pop the flathead screwdriver in both ends of the socket and just apply a little bit of pressure. What we'll do is we'll just count the pins and we're gonna find that this is a 42 pin chip. So we can alter the BIOS and reprogram this. We're not gonna be doing that in this video. What we're gonna be working on is trying to alter the disk structure to see if we can just obscure that check. Taking a look at the disk here, you're gonna see 703JAA02, and that is the data we need to match. Luckily, Konami was nice enough to leave the numbers right on the disk for us. Two different versions of Heat of 11, and you'll see that 703EAA02 versus JAA02, and those are our keys that we need to match to the real-time clock chip. So taking a look at this little text document right here, we're gonna go over what we're doing. The goal is to strip the real-time clock check out of the BIOS. Some of the disks have a rtc.driver file in the subdirectory, but Battletrist does not. So there's different ways that the chip actually checks for the matching data. What we're going to be doing in this first episode is we're going to be going into the Heat of 11 disk and matching the disk codes to Battletrist so that we would technically have a match on that 7K ROM and obscuring the rtc.driver files to see if that'll allow the board to boot past that real-time clock check. Below here, you'll see my thoughts on how I want to execute this process. First, I'm going to remove or obscure the driver for the real-time clock chip from the disk. Hopefully, when the board looks for that driver and doesn't find it, it'll bypass that check completely and it'll just boot the software. The 7K we will match, that's disk codes on the front of the two disks I showed. We'll hex edit the Heat of 11 image so that it matches the Battle Trist disk code and we'll be good to go on that. From there, we're just going to take a look for real-time clock references in the hex editor for Battle Trist as that disk is formatted slightly different. From there, we'll try to boot our patch disk, and if that boots, we're done. If not, we know we have to go into the BIOS and start removing the real-time clock checks in the BIOS to get past that missing board. So we'll see how that goes. Using the Opera File System Reader, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the Battle Trist image, and you're going to see when we open that up, there are a ton of files on the disk itself. There are no subdirectories. The other four Konami M2 disks, as well as all the 3DO M2 disks I own, I'll have subdirectories that'll hold drivers or other content. So this disk is formatted completely different, and there is no rtc.driver file on the disk. So that is definitely going to give us a little bit of a roadblock because not only do we need to crack the check, but we need to handle the Battle Trist disk in a completely different manner than the other four. Hopefully if we can just get the check out in the BIOS later on, if we have to do that, we won't have to worry about that disk. Now we're taking a look at the Heat of 11 disk. This is an original disk, and you're going to see that there are those subdirectories. And if we go into system.m2, you're going to see in the drivers, rtc.driver. That is the real-time clock driver. So what we're going to do is just double click on that, and we're going to save a copy out, just in case you need to take a look at it in the hex editor, that way we're able to see all the different information in the memory addresses that would be required for that driver. So now that we have that, let's move on. So now we're in a program called HexEdit. It is 100% free. Just Google it, look it up, and you can download it and use it. So we're taking a look at the Heat of 11 disk right now, and you'll see that it's just formatted in the normal M2 variety. And what we're gonna be doing first is switching over the disk code from 703JAA02 to the Battle Trist code, which is 636JAC02. So what we're gonna do is just search for 703, and we're gonna keep hitting Find Next, until we find the part of this image in hex that we need to edit. So let's keep clicking find next and you'll see it shows up at the bottom there, highlighted, and I'll just scroll down a little bit. And if you just keep clicking next, you will finally get to the point in which you need to start editing things. So right here, we're gonna see GX and that is the standard code for Konami disc-based games. And now we see 703JAA, that's the disc code. If you go over a little bit further to the left in hex, Konami was cute. And the release date is written in just numerical values that doesn't have a text-based conversion over on the right. And the release date is 1998. Since Battle Trist and Heat of 11 were both released in 98, we don't need to change that. But we need to change 703 to 636. HexEdit will ask you if you're allowed to edit the document. So just say yes. And now we put 636 in there. 
We're going to go down to JAA and we're going to switch it over to JAC. The last letter is just revisions. There's a JAA release of Battle Trist, and then there's a JAC as well, which is the bug fix. So we switch it over to JAC, and now all that data in hex is correct. We now have the disk code for Battletress assigned to an image for Heat of 11. So if the real-time clock chip was on board, you could just flash that real-time clock chip, and you could effectively disk swap your board, Battletress, for a Heat of 11 disk. Just go up, hit save, and now we're going to work on that real-time clock part. So going back up to the text find box, we're just going to type in RTC and we're going to hit enter and it's going to show us each time the letters RTC exist in a row in hex and we'll just keep hitting find next until we get to the part in which you want to start amending. We're looking for RTC.driver and there it is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to obscure the reference. As opposed to deleting the data, I'm just going to put more dots in there, basically in essence making it seem like it is empty. What we're going to go through the entire hex document and replace rtc.driver with dots. So all we're doing is obscuring the reference. So if the BIOS is specifically looking for that hex value, it's not going to find it. That could very well cause the hardware failure to come up and not boot the disk, but as opposed to getting into the BIOS and starting to burn chips, I always like to work from the easiest idea backwards. We'll speed it up, we'll save the file, and then you're good to go. We'll get to the next step. Oh, and by the way, I didn't find a single real-time clock reference in the Battle Trist image in Hex Editor, so as opposed to showing you finding nothing, we just bypassed it, we'll address it in a later video. Now that we have that patched Heat of 11 bin in queue, all we're going to do is go ahead and burn that to a disk so we can test it on original hardware. And once we have that burnt, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we didn't break anything in the process. M2 uses the Opera file system, and that is a different byte sector size compared to regular disks. So when we go in here and just take a look at the CD-ROM drive, we do see that that file structure is intact. We have a working M2 disk. And if we go into those subdirectories, where it used to say rtc.driver, it's just dots. So we have successfully obscured the file name from the disk. I do not know if that's going to allow it to boot. I'm going to show it to you in real time as I test it. I didn't try this beforehand. We're learning together. So just for a reference, here is my original World Soccer Championship Heat of 11 board booting up with the original disc. And what you're going to see is how it boots. You have to put the disc in during the splash screen if the disc is already in there and you hit power. It doesn't boot. Don't ask me why. It's just one of those things that the M2 likes to do. But when the screen changes, when that disc boots up, we're going to go through the BIOS checks as well as the CD checks. So what you're going to see is the 11K is okay, and that has nothing to do with the real-time clock check, and the real-time clock comes up second. The version is JAA, and that's important. Mass ROM check 8Q is the disk code. So we have JAA, and it matches the real-time clock, as well as the 8Q chip on the board. So we boot right into the game. Everything's working perfectly fine. This is what it looks like when all the data matches. The disk is meant for the board, real-time clock chip, and the 8Q chip have all the data you need on it. And there's a quick peek at the real-time clock board that's missing from the board we're working on. Makes it a lot harder. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put that disk that we just built into the machine. It has been hex edited to have the disk code for Battle Trist. And we've also removed any reference to the real-time clock driver. So if it boots, what that tells us is that we have an M2 disk. It will not start booting a disk if it's not formatted correctly with the Opera file system. So if it boots, that's step one to getting this board up and running. You can hear that CD-ROM drive start to spin up. If you hear it spin up, then you know it's at least trying to access the disk. If it doesn't spin up whatsoever, then it's either a bad burn or the file system isn't working. There you go. 11K is good. And what's going to happen right now? We get a hardware error. So obscuring that data did not, in fact, cause it to change. We're going to have to take a look at the BIOS files on this and try to manually edit out any reference to the real-time clock that's occurring in those as well. What we'll do really quick here is we're just testing the original Battle Trist disk, and we're going to see that that also fails, but it also says version JAC, so we know as far as those hex edits are concerned, we're good to go on that test disk. Obviously, this is something that's going to take us a little bit of time, because what we're doing, in essence, is cracking Konami's copyright protection for the M2. It's not an easy job. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday with another episode of the Mainline Series, but if you could hit the like and subscribe button, it helps us out. This is a really difficult video to make, and we're going to be making some more. Short of that, you can follow us on Instagram at Chicago Game Collector. But otherwise, have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.